Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Very Cold Lasagna Podcast, your filthy casual place for all the filthy casual takes on the world of sports. I am Dylan Lasagna, and welcome to another episode, episode number 137 of this icy yet spicy podcast. And we got another good show for you all because, well, it is the end. It is the finale of our 2022 NFL season recap month. Man, I can't believe it. We're at the very end of our month-long series. Can you believe it's the end? I certainly can't. Here we are a month ago just talking about the Chicago Bears and Bears football. And here we are about to talk about the very last team, the Super Bowl champion. But we'll get to that in a bit. So I just want to say thank you for all the support, for all of you that tuned in, whatever is watching me or listening to me talk about um, these teams, whether you're a fan of them or not. I really appreciate it. And there was some good feedback, some bad feedback. Um, I really appreciate the feedback regardless of how it was um, all month long and all the people that were listening and watching it. So I really appreciate it. I really do. So make sure you still stay tuned in to Very Cold Lasagna um, because I'm going to be trying my damnest to keep it going, to keep it going after this season month long series. So that being said, you can stay tuned to Very Cold Lasagna on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcasts. Oh, wait, Anchor FM doesn't exist anymore. We got Spotify for podcasters now. So, yeah, that's a thing still. Anyway, follow the show on social media, on Twitter and Instagram at Very Cold Lasagna. And remember to rate the show, review the show on your preferred audio platform and on the YouTube side. Smash the like button, leave a comment, and smash the subscribe button. The subscriptions mean the world to me and your support in general. So that being said, now let's get to the fun part, shall we? The final season recaps. Our finale of our season recap month is here. The three final teams. We have the, the AFC Championship runner-up. We also have the Super Bowl runner-up. And, of course, the one that won it all, the Super Bowl winner. So, how did these three teams get here? How did they get to this point? Why didn't one get to the Super Bowl? Why didn't the other win the Super Bowl? And then, why did the other, why did the other win it all? So, Let's talk about it in our final NFL season recap episode for 2022. So we begin our finale of our 2022 NFL season recap month by going to the jungle because they love fun and games as we take a look at the Cincinnati Bengals. So the Bengals were entering 2022 having exceeded expectations uh, a season prior because of a successful season from quarterback Joe Burrow coming off that torn ACL from his rookie year in 2020. And they also had a breakout year from rookie receiver Jamar Chase. Um, And, you know, they also had some key stops on defense in their playoff run, especially when it came to the AFC title game where they upset the Kansas City Chiefs, where they came back um, down 21 to three, forced overtime and got a key interception off of Patrick Mahomes to get to the Super Bowl. But unfortunately for them, you know, they just they fell just a little bit short of winning Super Bowl 56 against the LA Rams. So, yeah, a pretty successful season for the Cincinnati Bengals, who many thought were going to be in a big rebuilding mode um, in year two of that. So for Cincinnati, obviously, they wanted to get back to that point. They wanted to get back to the big game. But to do that, they had to address the biggest problem that cost them that big game. And that was the broken offensive line. The offensive line that not only got Joe Burrow injured in his rookie year, but also got him beat up, got him sacked a lot in 2021, including that Super Bowl. So last offseason, they decided to go get tackle Lyle Collins, center Ted Karras, guard Alex Kappa in free agency. They really beefed up that offensive line to better protect their franchise quarterback. So by doing that, you know, Cincinnati seemed poised to make another run with that better offensive line to better help out their quarterback. 
give him time to throw. So Cincinnati seemed poised to make a better run to claim their fame in the AFC. Unfortunately for them, when the regular season came around, things didn't exactly start off that way. They began the season 0-2, and their offense looked very sluggish in contrast to the year before, especially Joe Burrow. He threw four interceptions in the very first game against Pittsburgh, and he was very off target in the game against Dallas. And the new look offensive line experienced a lot of growing pains to start off the season. You know, it took some time for them to gel together and protect their quarterback. And people were saying, like, oh, well, it's the same old Cincinnati offensive line, even though they got some new uh, fancy pieces there. So, sure, the Bengals slowly returned back to their winning form, uh, but they would suffer some pretty bad losses within the division, especially on Halloween night. I still remember when the Bengals were falling down 25 to nothing to the skid marks. Yes, the Cleveland skid marks, a.k.a. the Browns of all teams where everyone on Cincinnati was really bad in that game. They got some Halloween deja vu in that game, and they got boat raced by Jacoby Brissett and the skid marks. But fortunately for them, you know, that game proved to be the catalyst for what ended up being an eight-game uh, winning streak for Cincinnati to end the season for them. So Joe Burrow looked like he is playing like an MVP candidate again since then. The new-look offensive line started to finally gel together and protect their quarterback. And the defense was making the clutch stops it needed to do to support its offense in game-winning situations. So by the time you get to Week 17 in a pivotal matchup against the Bills at home, the Bengals not only had a chance to wrap up the AFC North, but also stake a claim on an outside shot to grab the top seed in, in the conference. But unfortunately... As you all know by now, the DeMar Hamlin situation happened and where he collapsed. And like I said with the Bills, both teams handled this situation very well. It was clear and obvious that there's no way these, these players can play. And Sean McDermott and Zach Taylor got together. It's like, yeah, we can't. After after all this emotion, after a player nearly just died, you can't have this. You can't You can't let these players continue on like this. So they got together, brought their teams back to the locker room. It's like, no, we're not playing this game. So really good, especially really good for Cincinnati too. It's like on their home home field, like they can't, yeah, they can't let you can't let these players play, even if the NFL really like really wanted them back out there. It's like, no, we're not doing it. So for as good as Cincinnati did in that Week 17 game, they got the short end of the stick there. Uh, when it came to the modified playoff format, when the game eventually got canceled. So, what do I mean by that? Well, they actually, their playoff game against the Baltimore Ravens, well, it could have been decided by a coin flip, like, in terms of who was going to host it. Now, had they lost that Week 18 uh, game against the Ravens, yeah, that would, their home, the, the host of that game, the wild card game, was, which was against the Ravens, could have been in Baltimore. Had they lost via coin flip, had they lost that coin flip, the Bengals-Ravens game would have been in Baltimore, even though the the Bengals won the division. So fortunately for Cincinnati, they didn't have to worry about that. They won the game in Week 18 and met them next week in Cincinnati. But that game, that wildcard game, surprisingly, the Ravens stayed in it uh, because of their defense. But... They, the, the Bengals were blessed with the gift. A blessed with the gift from the gods. And Tyler Huntley, his goal line gaff, his fumble, led to a long fumble recovery for a touchdown by Sam Hubbard. And that ended up being the decider for Cincinnati eliminating the Ravens in, in the first round matchup. Then the Bengals had to go to uh, Snowy Buffalo in the divisional game in a proper matchup with the Bills. And... They easily dismantled them. But in fairness to that game, it was, like I said, with the Bills, it was pretty obvious that the Bills were just emotionally checked out. Now, the Bengals were one step away from reaching that goal of getting back to the Super Bowl in a rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC title game. And, you know, they, they, the Bengals played pretty well in that game against the Chiefs. But 
they couldn't repeat the same success from last year against Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Joe Burrow just threw one too many critical interceptions. The offensive line, just like last year, um, was not that great. And especially even with the new look offensive line, they were less than 100%. They dealt with injuries late in the season. They badly missed Lyle Collins because late in the season, he tore his ACL. And there were not that many good calls in that game. But even then, late in the game, they didn't do that great. So overall, you know, generally, um, it wasn't a great end to their season for Cincinnati. But despite losing in the AFC title game, hey, these Cincinnati Bengals overcame the Super Bowl loser's curse and proven that they are a title contender for years to come. And they definitely have their franchise quarterback. Sure, they'll still have to deal with Patrick Mahomes for years to come, but they've already proven they, they can slay the dragon. And while they couldn't do it again this year, their time will come when they have to meet again. So looking at their offseason so far, um, they, they signed another offensive tackle in Orlando Brown Jr. from the Kansas City Chiefs. But in turn, they released Lyle Collins. So when one tackle comes in, one has to go out. So I guess the deciding factor was uh, Lyle Collins tearing his ACL and I guess getting stealing away Orlando Brown Jr. So, hey, you, you get some, you lose some. Um, they also signed uh, tackle Cody Ford from the Arizona Cardinals. So continuing to beef up Joe Burrow's protection, which is good. Um, but they did lose uh, safety Jesse Bates to the Falcons and Von Bell. So they lost both of their safeties to the NFC South. But they did re-sign linebacker Jermaine Pratt. So for Cincinnati, the most important thing, I guess, uh, so far for this offseason was continuing to beef up Joe Burrow's protection. So good for them. Now, some of the things that they should do... Um, for the rest of this offseason, maybe per, find some depth for the interior defensive line because it's definitely good to have Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson um, in the pass rush, but they could still use some help um, in the interior with Joseph Asai and DJ Reader. Especially like in the case of last year, they dealt with some injury, like multi week injuries in, in, in the season. So I'm just saying that they could use some help gain some interior pressure and maybe they can upgrade at corner too. So the Bengals secondary was okay, but when it came to um, passing situations, when they, when either teams fell apart uh, or falling behind or trying to make that or trying to make a comeback or big place happened, then the Bengals were just kind of sleeping on the wheel. They haven't re-signed Eli Apple, but hey, eh, I can always find an upgrade for him anyway. So perhaps the draft is a good opportunity for Cincinnati to address these team needs. So overall, the, the Bengals avoided the dreaded Super Bowl loser's curse. In other words, um, when, when, when a team that goes to the Super Bowl loses, they do bad the next year, they avoided that um, in 2022. They established themselves as a long-term AFC contender instead. We know Joe Burrow now is a top three quarterback in the league. Uh, along with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, of course, Patrick Mahomes is the top dog. Um, but as long as the Bengals can continue to help Joe Burrow out in every way they possibly can imagine, then I think Cincinnati has a really good shot at making it back to the AFC title game and perhaps making another shot at the Super Bowl next year. So the second team that we're going to be talking about here in our finale of NFL Season Recap Month is, well, we're going to go from the jungle to the city of brotherly love, and that is the Philadelphia Eagles. So for the Eagles in 2022, they're looking to reestablish themselves in the NFC East as, well, contenders. And at the same time, trying to figure out whether or not Jalen Hurts, uh, their quarterback, can be the long-term answer at that position. Because, well, for the Eagles, they spent the last couple of years prior dealing with Carson Wentz and then Nick Bowles, but then not really having that long-term answer after finding out that Carson Wentz wasn't that answer. So they had a solid year out of Jalen Hurts in, in year two in 2021, and they made the playoffs the season prior, but that didn't exactly go well against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks. So the, the last offseason, they made vast improvements on both sides of the ball with big moves like linebacker Hassan Reddick, 
corner James Bradbury. And then on offense, they made a massive trade for Titans receiver A.J. Brown on draft day. And then back on defense, Saints safety C.J. Gardner-Johnson uh, before the season started. So when you had those moves, especially on defense, for Philadelphia, they were looking to take flight in a wide-open NFC. But clearly from their offseason moves, there was literally no excuse for Jalen Hurts to fail anymore, especially when you had an offense loaded with a really strong offensive line and a receiver to go alongside Devontae Smith. That's as good with in A.J. Brown. There's literally no excuse for Jalen Hurts to fail anymore. And that became the case when the season started. It became clear from the get-go that Hurts really thrived with this new-look, high-powered offense. Now protected by this rock-solid offensive line, Hurts had all day to throw, throwing to Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. And then he used the strength of the offensive line to use his rushing ability at will. He was, he was like, running, like Lamar Jackson, but honestly, better protecting himself. And then the rushing attack of Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, and Kenneth Gainwell also benefited from the offensive line. Gabe got plenty of running lanes uh, to attack opponents opposing defenses on the ground. Get first downs. Get touchdowns. Like, more touchdowns in the last couple of years. Defensively, even though it's secondary, you know, kind of had some lapses in pass coverage, it was still one of the best in the league in creating turnovers, stopping opposing opportunities, mainly because of the, de the defensive line, which had an absolutely crazy rotation with Hassan Reddick, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Javon Hargrave, Linevald Joseph, and Josh Sweat. Like, that was a freaking crazy rotation of uh, pass rushers. Like, that's like a freaking uh, gold mine right there. And it was freaking relentless at getting towards the quarterback, pressuring them so much. And it became even more of a gold mine when the Eagles traded for Robert Quinn from the Bears. Like, damn, dude. Like, holy hell. Like, you knew the Eagles were trying to go all in for Jalen Hurts uh, this season when they have a defense like that. And Jalen Hurts is playing like that. So the Eagles managed to go a no to start the first half of the season. And yeah, even though they lost to Washington on an upset on, on an upset loss, they still managed to look like an unstoppable team afterwards. But when you get to late in December, you, they started to suffer some injuries um, to to Jalen Hurts, Lane Johnson at, at the offensive line, and Avante Maddox at corner. It began to cripple the team uh, as they lost a very close game to the Dallas Cowboys on Christmas Eve and a winnable game to the Saints on New Year's Day. And when they should have clinched the top seed in both of those games, it put them in danger of losing it um, with one week left to go in the season. But they managed to get Jalen Hurts back for week 18 against the Giants, who had nothing to play for because they already clinched the playoff spot. They were already in their spot. But yeah, they still managed to go 14 and 3, get the top seed um, that they wanted to get themselves a week to get healthy. And yeah, when it came to playoff time for Philadelphia, they were back to their full strength, resumed their business, destroyed the Giants in the divisional game to get to the NFC title game. There, they beat up on the 49ers as well. However, Jalen Hurts didn't actually have a uh, as good of a game as he did against the Giants. And there's the big asterisk of the 49ers losing both of their quarterbacks uh, to injury. So, yeah, yeah, there were questions about how the Eagles would actually do in the Super Bowl because they did advance, but there are questions about how they would actually do against, well, the much similar team in Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. So in that game, yeah, they they were high. They still had their high powered offense in that game. They had Jalen Hurts in. The offense had a really strong game, and it had, and Jalen Hurts was well on his way to winning the MVP, the Super Bowl MVP. But unfortunately, the defense couldn't find any way to stop Patrick Mahomes, who was still on a bum ankle, and their similar high-powered offense. And for the Eagles, their wings just were clipped a little bit. 
uh, enough for them to lose that game. And also remember the the bad holding call too. So overall, even though the Eagles couldn't finish uh, one of their best seasons with a title and cap it off with a Super Bowl MVP for Jalen Hurts, hey, they definitely enjoyed uh, a major step in for Jalen Hurts, taking in what could be potentially their long-term answer at quarterback. But at the same time, though, you have to wonder, was this one of their best chances to get in a title, though? Well, I mean, it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. So going into this offseason for for the Eagles as it's ongoing, yeah, that question, you know, it starts to creep up a little bit because of all the of all the things that are happening right now with the with Philadelphia, all the losses that they're occurring from that that talent pool that they had this 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 uh this season, this past season, with the likes of uh, Javon Hargrave going to the 49ers, CJ Gardner Johnson going to the Lions, DJ Edwards, that linebacker, going to the Bears, Kaiser White, a linebacker, going to the Cardinals, and even Miles Sanders going to the Panthers. So all those big names um, that were a big part of the Super Bowl team in 2022 for Philadelphia are are gone. Took took money elsewhere to go play for other teams. And yeah, they tried. They're they're currently trying to um, put put a hole in it with signings like Rashad Penny from Seattle. Corner Greedy Williams from the Browns, linebacker Nicholas Moreau from the Chargers. But who knows if it'll be enough. And yeah, they did re-sign James Radbury, uh, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Jason Kelsey. I mean, we'll see. We'll see if if it'll be enough. Some of the things that they still need to address, though, um, they still have to find another defensive tackle um, because unless they're willing to find out if uh, their first-round pick in Jordan Davis will pan out, they need to figure out who will fill the void left by both Javon Hargrave and if Lynn Val Joseph doesn't resign, him too. And you have to find another safety to compete with Justin Evans, uh, who they signed. Um, because while this, while Justin Evans, you know, he could potentially serve as a replacement for CJ Gardner Johnson, who I'm still surprised they, the Eagles didn't even bother to resign. Justin Evans comes in with an injury history that, you know, honestly shouldn't come inspire confidence in Philadelphia. So they gotta find some someone in the draft to maybe compete with him for the right to start alongside Reed Blankenship because, you know, that for as good as Philadelphia was in 2022, their secondary was a big weakness in that Super Bowl. So overall, you know, the Eagles took a major step forward in 2022 especially with Jalen Hurts, who proved to be a quality quarterback with his dual threat ability and knew how to protect himself for the most part. Now, it can be easy to say that the Eagles um, will regress this coming fall due to the heavy loss of talent and as Cincinnati uh, overcame and experienced firsthand, uh, at least early in the season, the dreaded Super Bowl loser's curse, or either. However, you know, you still have to consider how much weaker the NFC continues to get. So, you know, if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, maybe they shouldn't be written off quite just yet. So here we are, the very last team of 2022 NFL Season Recap Month. I'm pretty sure you all know who it is, right? Well, of course, the Super Bowl champion. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. So... Once again, the two-time Super Bowl champions. How did they get to this point? Well, let's talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. So, the Kansas City Chiefs heading into 2022 were expected to face perhaps their biggest challenge yet. Not just from its usual suspects in the AFC, like the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. But no, this time around, uh, last offseason, they're facing their biggest challenge from within the AFC West division. Because the Las Vegas Raiders, the LA Chargers and even the Denver Broncos all made substantial uh, additions to try and dethrone the team that has gripped the AFC West for six consecutive years, especially considering that the Chiefs traded away one Patrick Mahomes' best weapons in Tyreek Hill at receiver, and they didn't do a whole lot um, finding a suitable replacement for him. 
They did. They signed Juju Schuster and Marcus Valdez Scantling, but they weren't top options on their previous teams. So, the Chiefs going into their regular season, they were gonna find out how to how the offense would work without a top receiving option and only Travis Kelsey. But despite all that, despite some inconsistencies at receiver, Mahomes still found a way to get everybody involved. Still found a way to torch opponents at will. Obviously, Travis Kelsey, you know, he is the go-to weapon on offense. But surprisingly, Juju Schuster, Marcus Valdez-Scantling, all those receivers. And when they got at the mid-season point, uh, trading for Kadarius Tony from the New York Giants, and then rookie running back Isaiah Pacheco as a receiver, they all stepped up to the plate, all gained the trust of their MVP quarterback. So it was pretty much, well, uh, it was pretty much like Golden State Warriors basketball. Like everybody gets the ball uh, back in the day. And then defensively, yeah, they still have their issues from the, from the past few years, including the pass rush this time around, except for Frank Clark and Chris Jones. They're still a good uh, pass rushing duo. Um, but other than that, they couldn't really generate much pressure on the quarterback. In the secondary, that gave up one too many plays still, and they sorely missed uh, safety Tyron Matthew. But, yeah, other than that, you know, Patrick Mahomes is still Patrick Mahomes. He was still carrying that team. And considering the fact that the rest of the AFC West ended up being a massive bust too, the, the Chargers were still the Clippers um, besides Justin Herbert. The Denver Broncos were an absolute massive bust, so bad that Patrick Starr was roasting their ass. And... The Raiders were not not really, not really that good with uh, Josh McDaniels as their head coach, at least in their first year. So the Chiefs were doing their business, cruised their way to a seventh straight division title, and even though they lost to the Bills and the Bengals in the regular season, they were still keeping pace uh, for that AFC top overall seed, and they nabbed it. So they had that first round bye. They enjoyed it, and when it came to playoff time, they managed to hold off the Jaguars in their first in that first game uh, for their playoff run into the divisional round. But that wasn't the big story for um, Kansas City. The big story was um, the entry to Patrick Mahomes. Concern grew in, in Chiefs world because he suffered a high ankle sprain early in that game. He had to leave in that game. Then he came back in that game. He played through it. But he was clearly a, a different quarterback. He had to adapt to being a more pocket-like quarterback, being more of like a pocket passer, and less of the one that moved around the pocket, making all these sidearm throws that he usually does. That being said, he braced the challenge of doing that. He still found a way to get everybody involved, find, find his receivers, such as the case was the AFC title game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, finding a way to get everybody involved despite being restricted in the pocket and taking those hits. Um, and so somehow, some way, the Bengals defense just couldn't figure him out. And Kansas, City def Kansas City's defensive line took advantage of Cincinnati's beat-up offensive line. And just like in the previous year, sacked Joe Burrow countless times and forced him to throw some key interceptions in that game. And in a redemption from last year, the Chiefs wound up winning that AFC title game on a game-winning field goal to advance to Super Bowl 57 and against, well, Andy Reid's old team, the Philadelphia Eagles. And in that game against Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, well, yeah, it was it was a wild game. It was, well, okay game, <laughs> at least from my perspective. But, you know, I can see how people kind of liked it. Um... They had some serious uh, difficulty, not only trying to uh, stop uh, Philadelphia's similarly high-powered offense uh, because, well, Jalen Hurts is a pretty good quarterback, um, but they also had to. They also had trouble trying to get their own uh, offense going, and it seemed like uh, their hopes of a third title were going to vanish because when Mahomes left the first half, he was limping. He got his injured ankle crushed and aggravated but the Chiefs when they were down 10 at halftime after Rihanna performed her halftime show it seemed like Mahomes magic uh, found 
found its luster because Mahomes showed no signs of pain. He was running running out of the pocket, and he led the Chiefs to a 21-3 rally um, in the second half to get them back in the game, take the lead, and sure, the Eagles fought back, but the Chiefs held them off despite an anticlimactic ending with that holding call. So the Chiefs would outlast the Eagles to win their third overall uh, Super Bowl title and their their second title in three years. So overall, it, I guess it's fair to say that we were all wrong. We were definitely all wrong to doubt the Kansas City Chiefs. This year was a masterclass. It was a real masterclass by Mahomes. I'll admit that. He managed to find ways to get everyone involved on offense. And as a result, both he and the whole offense came came in clutch when it mattered most. He did pretty much um, all of it, despite not uh, he also not having a top receiver, not named Travis Kelsey, and on a bum ankle. Um, you know, credit to the defense, too, because, you know, they got in some uh, key stops as well. And, you know, as a result, the reward... They get it. They get their second ring in three years. Patrick Mahomes gets a second league MVP and a second Super Bowl MVP. So the Chiefs have proven once again they're the alpha team to beat in the AFC. And you know, despite a few losses already in the offseason, they they look sure primed, ready for a title defense in 2023. So looking at some of the moves that have happened for the defending champs uh, this offseason. It was a little weird when they released uh, Frank Clark um, at defensive end, but they signed another one in Charles Menehu from the 49ers. So, like I said, if one comes in, the other goes out. And they did lose uh, tackle Orlando Brown Jr. to the Cincinnati Bengals, but here's the thing. When one comes out, the other comes in because they signed Jawan Taylor from the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, they're pretty much are immediately finding uh, guys and pack guys that can uh, come in and fill in the gaps, fill in the blanks um, and try to be, uh, try to make that run again happen for the Chiefs. So they also lost Juju Smith-Schuster to the Patriots. So unfortunately they can't fill in the gap quite yet. Um, they did sign a, a safety by the name of Mike Edwards from Tampa Bay Bucks. So that should help a little bit for uh, the Chiefs secondary as long as they know how to play defense. And linebacker Drew Tranquil from the Chargers. Um, so some things that the, the Chiefs still need to do um, to prepare for the title defense if they want to get to that point. And I say the biggest one being is that they have to find a, a top receiver in this draft. Like, they really do. Because even though Patrick Mahomes found a way to make the passing game work, um, despite having no uh, top name receiver besides Travis Kelsey this past season, I don't think it'll work um, long term. Sure, maybe the, maybe maybe it will this season. <laughs> I'm being hypocritical about that, but I don't think it, it could be a long term thing. They're gonna have to find like someone that's really good that they believe can be a really good receiver at the very tail end of the draft, or maybe in round two. Who knows? Uh, that's where they found Tyreek Hill. But they're gonna have to find someone that can be. Patrick Mahomes, new go-to receiver, a top, a top number one receiver, and that process should start on draft day. They should also find another uh, defensive tackle that should go alongside Chris Jones. Um, you know, even though they have a new ally in Charles Amenahu, Chris Jones could you know still use some help um, along along the interior um, uh, to tackle from within. And I would say try to find something at corner. In the draft now it doesn't have to be like a starter or anything but you know rookie trent mcduffie could use some help he was solid but you know could still use some help because for as good patrick Mahomes is you know the chief secondary still remains one of the biggest weaknesses in andy reed's team especially in pass defense i mean it doesn't hurt it really doesn't hurt so you know in spite of some of the challenges on offense patrick Mahomes and company made it all work and what was the reward? An MVP campaign for Mahomes and another Super Bowl title for the Chiefs in 2022. Now, some people were calling this Chiefs, these Chiefs a dynasty awaiting to happen. 
when they won Super Bowl 57. I'm not, I'm not calling it quite yet a dynasty. Let's maybe if they win the next one, whenever that is, maybe we can do that. Well, congratulations, Chiefs Kingdom. You're Super Bowl champions. It's on a 2023. Everyone's going to be gunning for you. But regardless, they're the reigning, defending, undisputed Super Bowl champions. And the Chiefs will be ready to defend their kingdom and try to win it all again this coming fall. So congratulations. So with the Chiefs in the books, that is also a wrap on NFL Season Recap Month. 2022 here on very cold lasagna all the stories of all 31 teams have officially been told and whether you're returning or new listener slash viewer or fan of any of these teams or just a casual sports fan thank you thank you so much for tuning in to very cold lasagna's nfl season recap month 2022 i really appreciate it i really do like covering these teams uh this year even though the season itself, the whole NFL season this year was kind of mid, it was like a, it was it was so fun. Like, look researching uh, some of the things that were happening to these teams, uh, looking back at it, it, it was definitely uh, as, as as the month went along. I'd say it was it definitely got a little bit uh, less stressful. I'll say that it got a little bit less stressful than last year. Uh, obviously, I guess because it was my first year doing it. But overall, I just really want to thank you all for a, a, a great uh, NFL season recap month 2022. And like I said before, uh, let me know uh, what you thought of these three teams that we covered today. The Cincinnati Bengals, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Kansas City Chiefs. The final three teams of NFL season recap month. And let me just know of any of the teams that we covered here on season recap month. what do you all think of them? How have they do in 2022 and how will they do this coming fall in 2023? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on them, whether it's on the comments on YouTube or a message on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. I'd like to know your thoughts on them. So anyway, well, what's next? What is next for very cold lasagna? Now that season recap month is over. You're just going to have to find out. You're just going to have to stick around and find out. How do you find out? Well, smash the subscribe button on YouTube or listen to it on your preferred audio device. That's how. Do it, baby. Do it. So anyway, that is it for this episode of Very Cold Lasagna. Again, thank you for tuning in to this whole month-long series if you made it to this point of NFL Season Recap Month 2022 here on this podcast. So that is a wrap on episode number 137. And I'm Dylan Lasagna signing out. Thank you for tuning in. Keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of sports. And until next time, peace out.